Hey, it's Lauren from Tanglewood, and in fact, I'm at Tanglewood in the garden, and thought I would show you a couple of the things that we've got here. I know you've maybe seen a tour already, but uh, we probably focused on this at some point. Right here we have mulberries, and we actually have, it's been raining quite a bit. This is uh, rainy season. It rains a lot at this uh, these particular months. And so we've got a lot of mulberries here. Um, you can see they start red, and then they turn black. And it's when they're black that they're actually ready to eat. So let's see if we can find a couple. So these these are these are pretty dark. They they've actually still got some some red on them. So they might not be exactly right. I mean, they might be a little bit tart still, but we'll go ahead and give them a try. Pretty tasty. Not the best I've ever had, but one of the things that happens this time of year, if we don't pick them as soon as they're ready, they'll start to get a little mushy with all the, the rain here. So let me see if I can find one that is perfect. And we've got a lot of, uh, of mulberry plants. So while this one doesn't have too many that are perfect right now, we were, if we were to collect them from everywhere, and here's one that's pretty, pretty good. Pretty close. That's good. Still a little bit tart, but pretty tasty. Let's see what else I can find. There's one down there. It looks like it might be just about perfect. No, unfortunately, it's a little, little mushy already. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, how about this one right here? Okay. You see that? So let's give that one a try. Mm. That's good. We have a lot of fruits like this. They're getting started and we don't have a ton of production yet. So we'd have to collect them all to make a meal. You know, for me, I like to eat one thing at a time, mono meals, and it's hard to do. So. This is uh, mid-afternoon. It's uh, 2, 2.30. We'll be watching a movie with the group tonight, so I had my first meal a little earlier, so I'll sit down with everybody else uh, for dinner at 6.30. So it's kind of uh, mid, you know, midway between, and I thought I'd come down here. I know we have some things that we really need to pick. At least I thought we did. Let's see. We have here some pitangas, and pitanga is also called Suriname cherry. And so if you look right over here, you can see the cherry, and I think, I think what I'll do, we've got a swale here between the, the tree and me. I'm gonna go ahead and step down into it and climb up the other side. There we go, jump over. Oop. So there was one, I was about to pick this one right here. And notice there's a wasp on it. Probably want to leave that one alone for the time being. Um, you know, if we don't if we don't pick the fruit when it's ready, it won't go to waste. <laughs> That's for sure. There are plenty of uh, plenty of wildlife here that would be glad to eat it. So yeah, here's one. It looks beautiful, but it's already a little mushy. You know, and again with the rain, we don't have a whole lot of opportunity. We want them to ripen, and then we need to pick them pretty much right away. So let me see if I can find anything here. Uh, this, I, I want, I'm gonna see if I can find a perfect one, then I'll pick it and show it to you. Because they're, they're kind of, a, they're, they're beautiful little fruits. We call them Suriname cherries, as I said. Let me see here. Sorry about the camera work. I'm uh, climbing on a hill up through a bunch of So this one's, yeah, it's not really quite ready yet. Unfortunately, it looks like I may have to come back for these in a few days. You can see there's quite a few of them here. Um, here's one. Now this one is still quite, quite green, starting to turn red. And here's one over here, which is closer. It's further along, but it really should be like a dark, uh, you know, sort of cherry red. And not quite there yet. 
So it doesn't come off easily. It means it's not really ready to, to eat or to pick. I see another one over here, which is perfect, but I can also see it's already been beat up by the, by the rain and maybe by some insects. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Anyway, um, here, I'll give you another look here. Let's change my grip so you can see what I'm seeing. This is a cashew tree right here. This is an avocado here. There's more. Uh, this is mulberries right over there. Again, we've got the cherry right here. This is Rolinia right here. Um, well, honestly, I don't remember what this large tree is. There's another Rolinia over there. Uh, more mulberries. That's the mulberries where we were. You can see the, the mandarin oranges there. Up above, that's a ice cream bean. Here's more mulberries right here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna come on down here through the peanut grass, which is what I'm walking through, this ground cover. It's, um, we use it here because it, it provides nitrogen and keeps the soil covered. And so there's a few things here I'm gonna show you. While we're here, there's another Suriname cherry here, and there's a pineapple right there which looks like it was probably perfect and maybe should have gotten picked a day or two ago. So let me step across this big swale. You see that? So yeah, unfortunately there's, unfortunately it looks like um, that's pretty beat up. Um, we have a lot of pineapple plants. You can see right here, there's one and there's one over there and others here we have been picked already that was picked recently uh, this is new new here here's another Suriname cherry let's see if there's any, any fruit that's ready on this one so again there's there's lots of fruits in here which are yellow and orange um, this one is it's further along than most again you can Maybe here you can get a sense of the shape. They're not completely round. It's really beautiful. I love these. Um, they're also quite tasty. A little bit tart. You know, most, most cherries aren't so sweet as a Bing cherry. Here's another one right here, another plant. Um, same, same family, same plant. No fruit on this one. This one's a little younger. Let's walk down here and see if there's anything else ready. Now over here, let me take a look in through here because that tree right there is a jackfruit and there's another jackfruit behind it and it looks like maybe another one after that behind it. There's three of them right here in a row. These are big trees um, and you can see there's a bunch of stuff on the ground. Now the trees on the ground there are kind of scrubby trees. They're, they don't really provide a lot of value. They don't provide shade. They don't, there's not, they're not hardwood. There's really nothing much and, and this area was sparsely covered with those. So we planted these trees in here in the last couple of years. We've got lines of them. There's uh, several here. I can see more behind over there. There's another line right here. You can see there's another one down here. Again, there's a jackfruit right here. We have a lot of jackfruits. Jackfruits sprout easily from seed. We love them. So we've put a lot of them in. We probably have 400 of them. Um, and again, this is a jackfruit, there's an avocado, um, and then there's some other ones in there. And I'm not counting, there's a banana right there, but we don't really count the bananas because the bananas will do okay if they don't have full sun. But these other trees eventually need full sun, so what we do is we, we start them in with these trees that have very few leaves and don't provide a lot of shade, a little bit, to help protect. And then when the fruit trees are large enough, we want to keep a forest, but we'd rather have a forest of things that we want, of things that we're going to eat. So we'll take out these sort of trees that don't have much value to us. And once, once the fruit trees are large enough and really need the sun, and then uh, they'll grow faster without these other trees um, shielding them in any way. And let's see. So here, of course, there's lots of papayas between the fruit trees. So this is in the Anona family, and there's the papaya. And this was a rambutan which didn't survive. It looks like it's pretty much dead. We'll replace it. Um, there's another papaya on the other side. 
another little papaya and then there's another fruit tree and I'm not sure what that is I can't see from here but you can see a bunch of papayas papayas are, are grasses and they don't take a lot of space they don't get very wide and so we can interplant them um, where these other fruit trees are and at some point we may have to you know they may not do so well once there's enough shade but they're going to be perfectly fine for quite a while. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what this is, but this is, uh, this is fruiting for the first year. See these little fruits? They're not actually that good. Um, but we, you know, we've, we're basically planting everything we can. We're going to plant a lot more of the things we really enjoy, but we're planting everything possible. Here is a water apple, and it's funny, I, I might have shown you this before, but this is, there's one water apple left up there. So the water apples, we have pink ones, red ones, and white ones. This is a white one here. It looks like we're down to the last one. It's the only one I see still on the tree. Anyway, again, here's, here's a line of trees here. There's a kaimito right there, jackfruit across the way. It looks like um, maybe a breadfruit behind it. Another jackfruit here. Uh, again, I'm not. That looks like it's a cacao. And then there's another line you can't see behind this stuff. So again, we've we've cleared out the taller things, which would eventually get in the way. We're already be, being, you know, a little bit of a hindrance to the fruit trees, who were starting to want more uh, more sun. Now here's another example. This this is another water apple here, and it's oh look, there's a few more right there. You can probably pick those. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so here we have a water apple. This is uh, the white one. So they have a slight greenish tint, but... They're crunchy. They have a subtle flavor. I like... Excuse me, I like the red ones a little better. But, um, but these are good as well. This one here is a pink variety right here. Um, and you can see that it's starting, this, this tree is starting to provide too much shade for it as this grows taller. So what we'll do is we'll cut some of the branches off this larger tree so that the water apple tree, the one that we've planted, has what it needs. That's the idea. I'm embarrassed to say I don't remember what this is. We have 135 varieties of fruit here, roughly, uh, a little bit more. And I don't actually can't identify all the trees anymore. Uh, we've put so many different things in. I forget what some of them are. But you can see there's another line of fruit trees here. There's more back in here. Basically, we put them wherever we can. And we have some holes to fill right now. So we, we haven't filled them all yet because we've got more coming. We've got here's uh, something in the Anona family right here. Um, more papayas, more bananas here in different varieties. There's some little baby bananas right here. I'll show you. Okay, so this, this is how they, they form. This is the banana flower. Every day a petal comes up and there's little bananas forming underneath them. These aren't gonna, these aren't gonna mature. These here will. Um, they're still very young. I mean, maybe a, a week old, basically. It's about a week. And it'll take, oh, maybe two months before they're ready to eat. So they're still skinny little things. They're going to fill out quite a bit before we actually eat them. Okay, so you can see from here, here we are at the bottom. I don't know if you saw, but then we have our campfire circled through there. Kind of overgrown. Time to, to get in there and cut the grass a little bit. This is a butterfly bush. Um, but you get, a, you get a sense again. I'll show you here from my view. Here's what I'm seeing. So we have fruit tree, fruit tree, fruit trees up here, here. This is a nitrogen fixing plant. We'll plant more of them. There's a nitrogen fixer in there. There's more. We have to plant some more bush peas now. Again, here a line of pineapples. There's two that are getting close. There's another little one in there. There's more over there. These are all bananas in here. This is mulberry here. I don't see much fruit on it. There's one. There's a few in there. 
this, this one's still pretty young. Another mulberry here. They grow super fast right now. It's, you know, it's warm every day and we have, we have a lot of rain as well this time of year. So, um, and as we continue up here, you can see again, they're right there. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pineapples in various stages of growth. Looks like another Suriname cherry. That down there looks like it might be Mamon in the lychee family. Uh, I can see a, a couple of trees in there we need to replace. And then, you know, again, swale here. So the swale holds rain. The fruit trees are planted on the, on the bottom. Uh, there's a citrus, another swale there, another line of fruit trees down below. We've got more swales here. One, two, three, with a line of fruit trees here. Line of fruit trees there. Now here, look, there's there's a jackfruit. There's uh, another jackfruit at the end. In the middle, we had two things that did not make it. And unfortunately, this happens. Uh, some things, you know, the, the dry season is pretty long and hard here. Uh, five months with no rain. And it's, it's difficult. We're a pretty long way um, from the top of the property, which is, which is up that way. Um, and so it's, it's a little hard to get enough water to some of these trees that are far further away. And of course, this is going to be exacerbated as we start to develop uh, planting trees on the other side. So down here is the stream. You can see the, the forest here. On the other side, as I come up, you'll be able to see more. You can see how beautiful and green it is here. But as I, as we, there's a couple more pineapples. Oop, looks like there's one over there. If it's not too late, looks like it needs to be picked. So I'm going to go over there and pick that one. Here's a beautiful avocado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can only see part of it, but this one has been consumed. This is the thing. Once, once it gets, uh, they ripen. Uh, that's what I saw. Look at the other side. Um, somebody already ate it. Uh, there are plenty of critters here that will eat the fruit if we don't get to it. Okay. So back. I'm walking through this thick peanut grass. It does an amazing job of protecting the soil in the rainy season. In the dry season, it gets kind of thin without any, any water. And in some places, it'll actually look like it's dead and gone. As soon as it starts raining, within a couple of days, it starts to come back. Within a week or two, I mean, you can see now, it's just completely covered, lush and green. It makes it difficult for weeds to come up. Wherever there were weed seeds already, weeds will come up. But, you know, if you look right here, you can see a few weeds here, right? More fruit trees here, right along the swale. You can see the yellow flowers. This is peanut grass. And so um, it does a great job. It protects the soil from the sun. It helps keep the soil moist. Uh, helps make it harder for the weeds to grow. Although at first, uh, here's an area where there's still lots of weeds coming up. Okay, so we're gonna have to have, we'll have a guys, a couple of guys in here cleaning this up, and getting all the weeds out of here. And once we get them out, finally, so that it's just the peanut grass, then it gets very hard for the uh, weeds to get started. Now here is another tropical cherry and there's I don't see any fruit on this right now, but lots of tiny pink flowers. Okay, those pink flowers all become fruit. There's another Rolinia, more papayas, another Rolinia. Um, again, I'm not sure what that is right there. This is another Suriname cherry. Another one over there. This is a fruit we call geoplum here. This is uh, what we call guava in English. 
guayaba in Spanish. It's a coconut palm, just getting started. Again, here's something that uh, looks like it didn't survive. And the reason we haven't replaced these, you know, theoretically, we, we could have already replaced these. We've had a month plus of rain, uh, almost two months now, a month and a half. The issue is, is that we're waiting. Um, there's a little mango right there. We're waiting for a bunch of more varieties to arrive. We have a bunch of trees that we've ordered and uh, they are waiting to be sent. As soon as we have the money to pay for them, we'll get them here. Now, if you haven't seen a papaya close up, here's a papaya, right? It's actually a grass. It's not, it looks like a tree, but it's not really. So there's always a symbol, single stalk like this. Uh, they just go up and then the fruit is in the center here. Okay, so there's another one there, another one here. We have a lot of papayas coming because we've planted a lot of papayas everywhere. Okay, this I believe is borojo. This is a black wood. This is actually here to provide nitrogen to the soil. There's a beautiful avocado right there. So I apologize because I know we did the, the tour here. I don't remember exactly what we showed you. I don't think we brought you over here to this part of the property. Uh, we, it was limited to how much we could show, even with a couple of different videos. And so I was out and thought I would just record. Now here we have, we're trying an experiment here. Most grapes won't really do well in the tropics, but we've planted some grapevines. We've built a little arbor here just for grapes. And this is a grape, and that's a grape. There's a grape over there, and there's one here. Uh, we have one there. It looks like we have one that didn't survive. Or, well, it's still alive, just not very alive. We'll see what happens. More bananas. Farming, there's another bunch over there. Here you can see a flower just getting started. So there's no, no coconut palm here. There's no bananas that you can see yet. But see how this came away, then this one. Tomorrow, this one will open up and then we'll start to see little bananas underneath. That's the way, that's the way they work. Every day, there'll be one, on, a, on the other side, one of the petals will come off. And we have a citrus, which is currently <laughs> completely shaded by this banana. But um, each of these banana plants fruits once. Each stalk comes up, usually in nine to 12 months, and then it fruits. And once it's fruited, it's gonna die. So we cut it down as soon as it's fruited. And once that happens, this uh, citrus will have a little bit more sunlight again. It's a temporary situation. Eventually, the citrus will be tall enough that the, uh, the banana won't really affect it. Another little guava here. These guavas, guayabas are everywhere. Here's another little citrus right there. If you can see that. Um, again, I'll show you what I'm seeing as we walk here. So we've got this, this path that runs along the edge of the property. The road is over here. There's, there's actually a little property between us and the road. This was a wedge that was sold off from this property uh, several years before I got here. I wouldn't have sold it. I'd have kept it. Unfortunately, they don't want to sell it back. Um, I'd love to reunite it with the property, but I don't think they have any interest in doing that, at least not at this point. Here we have a whole bunch of bananas, which we planted here to create a bit of a shield, a bit of a break from the trail and the arbor up there to down here. You can see each of them is, they're planted around a hole. The hole collects rain. The rain goes into the soil. The soil is now very rich. It wasn't this way when we started here, but using the permaculture techniques we use here, the soil is fairly quickly transformed into beautiful, healthy soil. This, uh, underneath a big tree here, this tree is a fig tree, but it's not a fig anybody would be excited about. Um, it's a variety which is pretty dry and tasteless, actually, and um, the birds love it, the monkeys love it, so when it's fruiting, there'll be birds and monkeys sitting in there eating the, the figs, but I've tried them. They don't really, uh, they don't really taste like much, so. We don't bother. And again, you can see, you know, everywhere we go, we've got fruit trees everywhere. Uh, 
swale here with fruit trees, another swale up there with a line of fruit trees, and then we plant ornamental plants everywhere as well. The idea is to create something that is both beautiful and as productive as possible. So, um, actually I'm not sure what that is. This is ornamental, that's ornamental, this is a coconut palm, and then there's, there's fruit trees all along with some nitrogen fixers in there as well. A little citrus here. This is a uh, grenadilla, which is a sweet member of the passion fruit family. Small like a passion fruit, but orange. And the vines are healthy. We haven't had any fruit yet. In fact, the first vines we planted here didn't do so well. This particular variety of the passion fruit family prefers cooler weather. And we're up at some elevation here, but they like it even cooler than we have here. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll fruit. I love these. Um, we've also planted granadas, which we have on this arbor and another big arbor over here. But so far the, uh, the grenadilla hasn't done much for us. By the way, everyone loves the bird of paradise. And here's a member of the family. Can you see, aren't they beautiful? More bananas there forming. We have bananas, bananas forming everywhere. We have uh, 16 varieties so far, and I don't know how many plants, lots of them. And of course, it's like bamboo. Each, each root keeps putting out new shoots. So we, we continually have more and more of them. This is a fruit we saw earlier down below. I didn't remember what it was. Another one here, fruit tree. And again, little little forest of banana plants here. There's the granada there. I, uh, when we did one be or video before, I, I mentioned but didn't actually show you. There, and again, there's lots more plants. We're on the other side here. So there's, there's another Suriname cherry, papaya, coconut palm, star fruit, anona, uh, coconut palm, mulberries, this is a mango, another coconut palm. Uh, there's a citrus. I'm saying citrus because I don't remember which one it is, and it's hard to tell by looking at them at this point. This is a guayaba. This is a mangosteen. The mangosteens are a little bit tricky. We've, we found them to be a little bit difficult to grow. So we've planted several and haven't had much success yet. This one's been here for several years, and is, it grows very slowly. They can take quite a few years, but if you're not familiar with mangosteens, they're amazing. Uh, they're called the queen of the fruits, and they're really, really delicious. So we're going to keep on trying as we, you know, we're going to plant everything. And if first it doesn't succeed, we'll keep on trying, as the saying goes. There's a mango here and a mango here. This is all sugar cane. We have, uh, I think, five or six different varieties. We don't do much with it, but it's there. If we ever want to do juice or anything. Anyway, um, here we have our large trampoline field we've created to play on, throw a frisbee, whatever, kick a ball, thatch covered rancho, big greenhouse there, smaller greenhouse on the other side. Here you're seeing our parking area, covered parking, that's the pool pump building, pools on the other side, and then the main building is up that way. So we've just traversed most of this, uh, this part of the property. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for being with me, and I will see you again sometime soon. Take care. Bye-bye.